All right, thank you. Uh, thank you for finally inviting me to visit uh, Caravan of Champagne. Um, is this in the way? I feel like I have a Darth Vader visor on. Is that? Well, I was thinking, oh, it needs to be down so the mic works. OK. Anyway, um, that's all right. So this talk is um, uh, not here. <laughs> this talk is joint work with uh, Agnes Baudry, uh, Paul Gorse, um, and Vesna Stoyanovska. Um, so let me start with uh, something very classical, which is the, the J homomorphism of uh, George White Whitehead. So this is a map. I mean, this was Whitehead's uh, take or generalization of the Hopf construction. And Whitehead produced a map from the homotopy groups of the stable orthogonal group to the stable homotopy groups of the sphere. Now, this is the only time unstable homotopy is going to appear in this talk. So let me rewrite that in terms of, of stable homotopy. So this I could write as pi k plus 1 of the spectrum ko into pi k of s naught. So this is the one part of homotopy theory that we really totally understand. And it's the one part that really impacts lots of other, or it's one part that really impacts computationally uh, many other parts of, of mathematics. So Adams analyzed this by um, producing a map. So this was analyzed by Adams, so determined by Adams. And um, he did it in two steps. He produced a map out to something that we, could, um, that we could understand, that we could compute. And then he showed that the image uh, was a sum and um, that embedded in the thing he mapped out to. So maybe I'll just cut to the chase that Adam studied the fibration sequence. So nowadays, we call this the K1 localization of the sphere. And um, that's the fiber of this map. So now we're supposed to have completed it at, uh, at the prime p, which is probably 2. And L is a generator of the group of p-adic units mod plus or minus 1. So that's the fiber. And then Adams um, studied this map from the homotopy groups ko to pi k of this to pi k of this. And he showed um, um, that the, the image of this embeds as a sum and here. OK, so this is something, um, this is something as I said, it's, it's one of the real treasures in homotopy theory, and it's something we really, truly understand. And there's long, for a long time, there's been a problem uh, or a question um, is can this be generalized to higher chromatic levels? And um, there's two forms you could ask this question. So let me ask this in a strong form. And that is to go from the homotopy groups of something we know, or rather, um, let's say, something computable, to the homotopy groups of the sphere with the property that um, when I go over to the homotopy groups of the KN local sphere, um, this is uh, highly non-trivial. And then there's sort of a weak form, which may be all that's reasonable to 
Um, the weak form may be all that's reasonable to hope for, and that is to go from the homotopy groups of something knowable to um, the homotopy groups of the K and local sphere by something non-trivial bypassing this. So the strong form, the weak form is you produce a map from something knowable into this, which we don't know very well. Um, and the strong form would be that that actually factors through the actual homotopy groups of sphere. So that's what happens in, the, in this case. OK, now, um, OK. So, so there was an approach that um, kind of came into light a long time ago, uh, and um, using these um, homotopy fixed points by finite subgroups of the Morava stabilizer group. So let me, um, let me set the stage for that. So I guess if there's a section, a title to this, it would be, to this section, and I'll call it, it'd be finite resolutions. All right, so I want to fix a prime P, which I did at the beginning without telling you. And then I want to uh, let E be the nth Morava E theory. And I'm going to let G be a finite subgroup of the Morava stabilizer group. And um, I want to assume that G contains the P CELO subgroup, or the finite in the, the, the uh, it contains a, a maximal finite P group of SN. So let me just say. And then I'll write. Um, uh, e O N to be the homotopy fixed points of this G action on N. So that's to remind you of K O and G doesn't appear in the notation. Now, so these E O Ns were introduced by Haynes Miller and myself around 1990, and part of the reason for doing this, so the K in local sphere is the homotopy fixed points of the action of the stabilizer group on EN. Um, and that group, most of the time, has homological dimension N squared, unless it contains an element of order P. And um, so the idea here was to deal, and, and that causes it to have infinite homological dimension. So the idea was to find a convenient spectrum so to deal with the infinite part of the homological dimension first, and then that passing from here to the KN local sphere should be a finite process. So there's an old theorem, um, and that is that um, the KN local sphere has a finite EON resolution. And there's an old thing that I never knew if it was a theorem or not. I guess we call that a question in math. Um, <laughs> there was an old question that it seemed like it probably has, the length is probably of length n squared. OK. And here's an example. This is the prototypical example of this kind of thing. <laughs> so let's suppose it's got length m, and you've chosen some kind of minimal resolution. So you have a resolution of the Kn local sphere so this m is probably n squared. And this is this finite resolution. So these are all EO n modules. And so there's a finite spectral sequence for computing this. And in particular, you get a map from pi k plus m of i m to uh, pi k 
of the KN local sphere. And so, as if you can make this explicit, and if you can explicitly identify I am, this should be some version of the weak form of this J homomorphism. Okay, so if you can identify I am, this leads to a weak form of the generalized J homomorphism. Okay, oh, I forgot about that board. Oh well. Um, okay, now, there's a couple of situations where one can actually uh, do this. So, um, so here's two examples. So in the first example, it's the one I just erased on this board. We have the K1 localization of the sphere going to KO, going to KO. That resolution has length. Oh, when you count the length of this resolution, you, unlike when you're counting anything else, you start with zero. So this has length one, because you start with zero. And, uh, um, and then there's one other. So that's the atom, the classical one due to atoms. And then there's another one um, for the K2 local sphere that starts with TMF. So this will be the K2 localization of TMF. And I, later on in the talk, I'll write that in the form as an EO kind of theory. So this maps to um, something. That's the zeroth term. There's another term. There's another term. There's another term. And there's a final term. Um, and there's a lot of work that went into identifying all of these. So I may have the names. I may have the. I'm not going to try to go through all the history, but in this region, there's a lot of work um, done in identifying the terms due to um, Gorse, uh, Hen, uh, Mahowald, Charles Resk, and um, I guess. Um, if I left off some names, I apologize. Does this go off? Yeah, it just went off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, if that's the case, do we still need to have the same? <laughs>
That's good, because uh, I don't really want what I just said to be recorded. Okay. <laughs> okay, and that's the, a recent result of Irina Bobkova. So in the case n equals 2, we have um, an interesting map from uh, we have an interesting map from, so this implies an interesting map from pi 44 uh, plus k, I'm sorry, now I have something wrong. Yeah, pi k plus 44 of TMF into pi k of the k2 local sphere generalizing the, J, the weak form of the J-homomorphism to the next chromatic degree. Okay, now my goal in this talk is to, um, is to get to a point where I, uh, by using sort of general considerations, oh, so this happens, there's a lot of computation that goes into this, and my goal is sort of with a more theoretical and less computational approach witness your utter astonishment when I pull this number 44 out of a place that's more appropriate than the one you're thinking of right now. <laughs> so I'm going to get produce this number 44, uh, or describe joint work with Baudry, Gorse, and Stoyanowska that produces this number 44 for more theoretical reasons. OK, now, the first thing is, um, so I want to use a few things about K and local homotopy. So one thing is that in K and local homotopy, that um, that the Morava E theory spectra and the Morava E O is dualizable. Okay, so. There's another way of getting a map of something into the sphere. You can start with the unit. And then you can just apply Spanier-Whitehead duality of this. And the dual of this is itself. Well, I didn't really need that this was dualizable to make this map. I could just have taken the function spectrum. But the fact that it's dualizable makes this um, something, um, this is an EON module, and it makes this something that one might hope to understand. So um, if you think about this a little bit, this map um, is this map from the end of the resolution in. So you could describe this map without discussing this resolution at all. And a problem emerges. And that problem is to identify the dual, the Spanier-Whitehead dual of this EON. OK, now, there's a nice way to do this. There's a nice way to approach duality in this, in this world uh, that appears in the study of piatic Lie groups and is due. Oh, so the above results imply that the dual of KO is the d suspension of KO, and the dual and uh, Bobkova's result implies that the dual of this K local TMF is the 44 fold suspension of TMF in the K2 local world. All right, now, um, there's a formula. There's a, a nice formula for this dual object um, that is really due to Sayre. So to describe this, um, I need to choose a filtration. So I have the stabilizer group. And I'll call that gamma 0. And I just want to choose a filtration by subgroups like this, where, oh, let's see, these are all normal subgroups. And I want um, the intersection, I want gamma, or well, let's just say I want them all to be finite index. And I want the intersection 
of the gamma m's to be trivial. Okay, oh boy. Okay, so, um, all right, then, um, I was going to prove some things here, but I think, um, I have until 1020? Yeah. What happened? No, for your talk. Oh. Oh, I thought they were 40 minutes. They're 50 minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, don't, I didn't really prepare enough for. No, I'll be. I'll be. I'm good. I'm good. All right. Well, so maybe I can give some more proofs. Let's see. So Sayre's duality formula is the following. Um, so let me write um, EM round brackets m for the homotopy fixed points of the gamma m action on E. Okay, so E m still has, um, it has an action, that's an E infinity ring spectrum, and it has an action of the stabilizer group on it that's trivial on gamma m, and it still has this residual finite group action. So the E m is a ring, and um, so there are all these uh, transfer maps and things like that. And I'm sorry, I'm uh, right. So there's, there's, there's a transfer map. Oh, well, so let me also, um, sorry, let me. I think I was going to derive this formula, but let me, just, uh, let me just point out some things. OK, so there's restriction maps. From, the, uh, from EM to EM plus 1. And the co-limit of that diagram in the category of KN local spectra is just Morava E theory. And this is all as an equivariant spectra, spectra with the action of the stabilizer group. There's also transfer maps. which go in the other direction. And, and one thing that's simple to check, you can check. So this is a simple calculation of Morava K theory, and um, is that if I take the multiplication map, And then I transfer to E0, which is the Kn local sphere, that this map is a perfect pairing. So this follows very, really easily from, you, you just have to prove that it's a perfect pairing in Morava K theory. And it follows from the fact that if, if you apply Morava K theory, so this follows from the fact that the Morava K theory of EM is the ring of functions from the stabilizer group mod gamma M into Kn star. And that this map Sorry, I've, uh, these are supposed to be square brackets here. I'm sorry. Uh, but this map just sends F tensor G to um, the sum over the, uh, uh, over the elements X in Sn mod gamma M of F of X times G of X. So, um, so that's, by looking at, say, the basis of delta functions, that's obviously a perfect pairing. All right, and the gap, these EMs were constructed so that this held. Okay, so that means that um, if I write EM, 
So that means that the, the dual of EM is equivalent to EM as an EM module and with uh, an action of gamma M on it, uh, an action of the stabilizer group on it. And now I can let M go to infinity, and so I find that the dual of Morava E theory is the inverse limit of the EMs. And now the bonding maps in this inverse system are the transfer maps, not the uh, restriction maps. So I take the inverse limit of this system, and I get uh, the dual of EN. Now, there's another aspect to this, and I, this is also has as easy a proof, but I won't, I won't give it this time. Um, so that is, so we have a map from the KN local sphere, or let's, let me just write it as the sphere into EM, into Morava E theory, and that gives me a map from the, um, from the homotopy fixed points of the trivial, trivial action here to the homotopy fixed points here. Or if you want, it gives me a map from the Spanier-Whitehead dual of B gamma M into EM. OK. And if I take the inverse limit, so again, I'm KN localizing. And if I take the inverse limit under transfers, I get a map from this into the inverse limit here under transfers. And that's the dual of Morava E theory uh, with its action of the stabilizer group. So I want to give this a name. Um, I'm going to call this S. Oh, I have to remember. There was a sign I, cho I changed my mind on. Uh oh. I think I'm calling this S minus G. OK. So I'll call that S minus G. And that's an invertible object. The Morava K theory that has rank 1, it's Sayre's uh, dualizing module for um, the cohomology of the, this p-adic Lie group, Sn. And I have a map into here. And this is an E module. So this extends to a map from E smash S minus G into the dual of E. And there's another theorem, which is easy to prove. This map is an equivalence. So we have this nice formula for the dual of Arava E theory as, a, as something on which the stabilizer group is acting in terms of some universal object and Morava E theory itself. So we get a, the following formula. And that is that um, the dual of EM, the dual of Morava, the dual of EON is the homotopy fixed points of this. <clears throat> OK. Now, um, I want to introduce another module. So let's let uh, GA. Let's let this be the one-point compactification of the Lie algebra of the stabilizer group. So this is the thing. So I could write this as the limit, the limit um, on or the. So, so let me write this as the direct limit under transfers of b of p to the n. So I'll explain this notation in a second. of this. So hold on. This was this, so I'll define. Well, let, me, let me do this. OK, so, so the Lie algebra of the stabilizer group is some QP vector space of dimension n squared. And I'm just picking some maximal order in there, or some order in there, and taking and applying the exact same construction I did to these subgroups to this abelian group. So this is supposed to be like the one-point compactification of the Lie algebra. and. Um, I called this S minus G. I'll compare that with SG, which will be the direct limit of this. All right, and now I get to the first 
And the real theorem is that, that SG is equivalent to SGA as, um, as SN spectra. OK, now um, I have a story to tell. So this is a birthday conference in honor of Paul. And I want to convey to you a little bit about what it's like to work with Paul. So a, a year ago, I was visiting Northwestern for a month. It was in May, a year ago last May. And that's where we were doing this work. And um, I don't know if you've ever been to, and so we, we got to this point. Um, and there was a really cool proof with a really flashy step number three in the proof. And um, I don't know if you've ever been to Evanston, but Evanston's great by day, but when the sun goes down and night descends on Evanston, it's best to leave the streets to the riffraff and the sinners. Uh, <laughs> Evanston gets kind of tough. So I, um, I was in the habit of going back to the apartment I was staying in and writing up what we had discussed all day. And as I got to this step three, I realized this argument was a little bit fishy. And uh, I couldn't, I was up most of the night, I couldn't fix it, it really seemed like it was going wrong. And uh, the next day I had to walk in and admit that I, this probably wasn't really a theorem. So I walk into Paul's office, Paul was gearing up to be chairman again for another tour. Uh, and Paul's on the phone and he sees me slouching in and he goes, I gotta go. Hopkins just walked in looking like a stray cat crossing the midnight track, crossing the tracks of the midnight train to Murderville. <laughs> and, and so I was like, and he looks at me, he goes, what's up, Hopkins? And I go, I got, I got bad news. Um, that it's that proof of the theorem about identifying SG. And he goes, I know right what you mean. That step three stood out like spats at an Iowa picnic. And I said, Paul, you don't understand. This whole thing is falling apart. We're not going to, we don't really have a theorem. What are we going to do? And I, I can't, con I was probably a lot more hysterical than I've just conveyed now. And I really thought Paul was going to come back to me with some line like, you know, the problems of two people in this world don't amount to a hill of beans or something like that. But instead, he slaps me in the face and he goes, pull yourself together, Hopkins. I'm, I'm a pretty soft guy, but, um, but you don't want Baudry and Stoyanovska to see you like this. So, so I pulled myself together and I was like, okay, you're right. Thanks, Paul. I needed that. Um, I know what we can do. We'll just erase this word that says theorem. <laughs> and we'll call this a hypothesis. <laughs> so this is the linearization hypothesis. <laughs> and we'll call that a hypothesis, and we'll never mention this moment again. <laughs> All right. All right, anyway, that's what it's like working with Paul. <laughs> And Evanston, uh, he's a pretty tough guy. Uh, OK, so this is just a hypothesis. So I'm going to produce this number 44 based on this, using this hypothesis. Um, this seems to be a rather interesting question. Um, it's something you can ask about any p-adic Lie group. It's true, it's, and it's pretty easy to prove if it's a unipotent group, but, um, but it seems rather complicated in general. I, I don't know, it might be easy. Uh, but uh, we haven't been able to prove it. Um, it's come up in other contexts, and I've asked quite a few people. Dustin Clausen um, has run into the problem, too, and um, has various ideas about proofs. But um, um, anyway, its status keeps kind of moving back and forth. I, I don't know. This seems to be, um, there seems to be something interesting going on here, but I don't know. So I'm going to assume this hypothesis, and then that lets us identify the dual of this in terms of, um, in terms of something that we understand. OK, so how does this all work now? Um, let me, uh, so I want to systematically think about this construction, right? What are we doing? We're taking an invertible object, like some twisted sphere. We're, um, we're smashing it with Morava E theory and taking the fixed points by a subgroup of finite index. 
So let me set that up a little bit more, uh, a little bit more systematically. Um, my finite sphere, that's some sort of uh, representation of, of, of G or a map from B of our group, maybe into K connected K theory or maybe into some kind of J theory spectrum. But this, this is where our, our, the restriction of our representation G might live. So I want to think of that as the fixed points of KO by the trivial G action. So I have this. I have the classical J homomorphism to um, the pit pick of the K lo KN local sphere, or just the Picard group, Picard space of the sphere. And then that maps in to pick of EO, and that sits inside pick of EN. And all of these are equivariant for the action of G. And so if I take homotopy fixed points, I get a map from maps of BG into KO all the way over to um, maps of BG. The homotopy fixed points there is pick of EON. And this is the map I want to study. OK, so this G, this representation G lives in here. And that, that script G, and this construction over here lives, is the image of that under this map. So this is a map we want to understand. Now, now I have goofed around and time is getting short, so I'm going to um, go a little bit quicker because I want to produce this, I want to astonish you by producing this number 44. So, uh, so I need to, um, so, so these methods, the method I'm going to describe um, generates a whole series of questions about this map, um, and you can, we can do calculations like this for, um, for the case n equals p minus 1. There's a lot of cases where we can do the kind of computation I'm going to describe, but just in the interest of time, I, wanna, I want to, um, I'm going to just focus on the example of interest. So our case, the KN localization of TMF, well, let's suppose p is not equal to 3 then in our case, the KN localization of TMF is um, Morava E2, and then homotopy fixed points set, fixed points by this group G, which has order 24. So this is the quaternion group of order 8 with, you know, and this acts, this cube root of unity acts by, when I act by conjugation, um, It just cyclically permutes i, j, and k. Why is well, isn't that also true for p equals? No, you're right. OK, let me say p equals 2. You're right. All right. Yeah, let's say p equals 2. Yeah. So I'm just going to do this at 2 and 3. All right, so p equals 2. OK, so. Uh, OK, now, in this case, the string orientation this implies that this map, KO into um, pick, uh, that if I restrict to the eight connected cover of KO, that that map is null. The composite is null. So this factors through. KO mod the eight connected cover of KO. In fact, the string orientation is, produces, I mean, is the, the choice of this map. So that means that this map here, in our case, this map factors through homotopy classes of maps of BG into KO mod KO8. Uh, going into pick TMF. Okay, so that's one thing. That's something special about this particular case that that happens. Now this group here is Z plus Z mod 24. This thing only has homotopy in dimensions 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and this doesn't have cohomology in dimensions 1 and 2. 
uh, with a mod 2 coefficients, and so I only get the H0 and the H4. And the map to Z is the, um, the map to Z is the dimension. So this sends a representation V to the dimension of V, and then this characteristic class lambda of V, where lambda is, uh, so every representation of this is spin, and lambda is, um, is this half of P1. It's a characteristic class that you can compute. OK. All right. Let me just. Uh, <coughs> Um, okay, and now, uh, sorry, that's this side, right? This has homotopy groups Z, Z2, Z2, 0, Z, and so H0 gives me the Z, okay, okay. Now, um, uh, I'm starting to think, I don't know, I, I was starting to think getting up and computing was a good idea, but now the talk, you know, it's getting late in the day, and uh, <laughs> I'm starting to wonder about that. But let me just, let's just try. Okay, so there's another general fact about this, and that is that um, if G contains plus or minus 1, then the regular representation of G, that always goes to 0. So that's true for any, um, for any of these EOs. The regular representation always goes to 0. OK, so, um, so what do I want to do? We need to figure out, oh, now, um, there's something else. Uh, so I, I want to talk, think about one other representation. So in our case, G, which is this group of order 24, so that's given to us as a subgroup of SU2. It's a subgroup of the unit quaternions. And so that gives me a map of BG into BSU2. And I'll choose a, gener a preferred, and that that two-dimensional representation I'll write as H, or that's a four-dimensional real representation, and I'll choose the generator here that, um, so the maximal torus has rank one, and I'll choose the generator here that pulls back to the square of the generator in cohomology there. So there's two generators here, they differ by a sign, um, but I don't have to pick one because I'm going to square it, and that gives me a unique class in H4 of this. And the linearization conjecture that implies that this G in this case is the quaternions, but with this acting by complex conjugation or in other words, it's pulled back from um, the trivial representation plus the adjoint representation of the group SU2. <clears throat> and that representation, when I restrict to, a rep to the maximal torus, that restricts to R plus um, the square of the defining representation of the circle. I wonder if this is that interesting to do. Well, anyway, I promised you this moment of astonishment, so let me, let me try. So that implies that, um, that G, or this GA, which is G, so that has dimension 4, and um, it's, uh, um, so it's, the Pontryagin class of this will be 4, and the, because the Chern class of that is 2, and so the, um, the um, half P1 winds up being 2. So this, this implies that under this isomorphism, this, this guy corresponds to 4, 2. 
Now, maybe I won't go through this. This is, this is also, it's, it's calculations like this, but you can check that the regular representation corresponds to 24 comma 1. Okay, so that's, you have to calculate some characteristic classes and you can check that. And now we learn a couple things from this. <clears throat> So one thing we learn is that in this group, so we certainly, we, we produce a map from z plus z mod 24 modulo the element 24 comma 1 into pick of TMF. Now what is that group? Well, um, that group is, um, so 24 times this, well, it's easy to check that this group is z mod 576, because 24 times this will be 576, 0, so at least 576, 0 right, that's equal to, that's equal to zeros, and this is just the trivial representation of dimension 576. And this is one approach to the 576-fold periodicity of TMF. Now, what was the thing we were interested in? We were interested in the fate of minus G. Well, G was, um, uh, what did I say, 4, 2. And so that's equal to um, 4, 2 minus twice that, 48, 2, which is minus 44, 0. And so minus g goes to the element 44, 0. And that's what we needed to prove, that the, the dual, which is the thing shifted by this minus g, is the 44-fold suspension. So I'll just pause for a minute for that to sink in. <laughs> All right, that's probably enough. And uh, I think I'm done. All right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can, you can understand those periodicities, and in fact, uh, you can cast our argument for the 256-fold um, periodicity of the EO4 thing that Mike and Doug and I look at. You can write that periodicity in this way. Um, I mean, it's basically the same argument we use. It, it sort of collects it in a... Yeah, but but yes, you can. Okay, so in that case you don't. Um, but what you need to know, so so he asked about getting periodicities for other groups that way, and you um, so in that case you need to know for some other reason that certain elements in this group have specified orders. You have to say something else about that. And so our argument in that, uh, this isn't really, it's just a way of repackaging the known arguments for those periodicities. Um, so we have a general conjecture about an analog of this. I mean, this is sort of, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, it's a hard, this sort of, the substitution for this is a hard theorem. And um, I don't know. I, it, I, there's a whole interesting s series of questions about that, and I'm not sure I, I don't really have time to answer it. But I'll just say, I'll say one thing. There's, a, there's another hypothesis that's consistent with an enormous amount of computational information that, that for this calcul, so, so for this calculation, it always works as if this factored through a, that, as if this was null. So there's always, if, if the representation 
factors through a certain predicted connected cover of KO, there's a hypothesis that's got numbers in it that says if the representation factors through a certain fixed connected cover of KO, it always represents zero here. Okay, so that, that particular connective cover, you don't get a factorization like this, but as far as this calculation goes, it's as if you did. And there's work of Kitchlew and Wilson uh, in the case of Z2 that gives you a whole bunch of elements that go to zero here. So there's a lot of, I don't know, that's a whole, I, d I don't want to kind of blow out the schedule, but there's a, this is a, there's a very interesting problem um, exactly that you're asking about, and there's a conjectural picture of what's going on, but not a conjectural explanation of it by any means. So I don't know if that helps some, but yeah. Um, yeah, at three, if you localize at three, it has a different, uh, that's right. Um, so at two, there's a smaller multiple of this that winds up zero. Uh, and it's because, um, uh, I have to, I have to translate it from another point of view, and I'm not uh, remembering now. Anyway, yes, at the prime two, it's, it's uh, eight to the third. It's eight squared. No, it's, well, anyway, <laughs> sorry. It's eight times 24 periodic. At the prime three, it's different, and the thing that reconciles them over z is this. But if I would have used, I could have used other techniques at the prime two and produced the, um, could have chosen a different representation and gotten something smaller here. So, yeah, sorry about that. Are there any other questions? Thank you, Mike. Sorry, I just thought, of, I'm sorry, but I have the, the better answer to your question is when you localize at a prime, you can localize this group at that prime. Okay, so that gives you an eight. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs>